Maryland's a, a very progressive state in erosion control. We use no-till, so we have relatively low erosion rates. So we're a leader there, but we were still had our high nitrate in groundwater, which was a critical problem for the nitrogen getting into the bay. What was going on here when I got here was really we're focusing on uh, herbicides. Because early on, when the whole bay thing started, this goes back to the bay again, there was thought that, uh, that herbicides used in agriculture were causing uh, the problems in the bay. So as we started, as it emerged that nutrients were the problem, I came from a nutrient background and started really looking closely at the nutrient issue. Russ Brinsfield was the center director here. He was very supportive of that research. So uh, he was uh, right from the beginning. Uh, when we said well, we're going to expand the scope here to include nutrients, even, where, even though the nutrient work wasn't funded when we first started, uh, he was totally supportive of bringing the nutrient question into our research effort. And he was very active in the agricultural community too. So, so he was talking to the, to the farmers. So he really knew how it worked at the nuts and bolts level of how farmers made decisions and what it was going to take for farmers to get to do this. In the late 90s then, he was also instrumental in the formation of the Youth Center. And really one of the driving factors that where Russ was interested in getting the Hughes Center started was this need to get uh, the interface, uh, an improved communication between the agricultural and environmental community, and also a, a way to talk to both sides at the management level, on the environment side and on the agricultural side. So it was a way to get research, uh, support research that was going to help solve these environmental problems but maintain agricultural productivity, but also improve uh, communication between the science and the policymakers. The purpose behind the cover crop program is to uh, help Maryland meet our uh, water, uh, watershed restoration uh, goals for the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, the program started back in the uh, mid-1990s and has kind of morphed into a much larger program. We have a about a $22.5 million budget that we work with. And the program has kind of changed over time from, from strictly a cereal grain uh, program to more of a program that allows for mixed uh, species of cover crops and looking at other environmental benefits besides water quality, primarily looking at soil health and greenhouse gas uh, emissions and healthy soils. So as this all started back in the 80s and these agreements were signed, everybody agreed that it was a great thing to restore the bay. But then it turns into what's the strategy going to be? So it sort of gets, uh, it keeps getting broken down to all the different sectors of land use and the economy. Uh, how are we going to do this? Because some, something's going to have to change. If the nutrient levels are going to change, we're going to have to change how we operate. So when it came to agriculture, which was identified as a major, a major nutrient source, we just started putting together strategies. And that, that groundwater nitrate part of it was especially difficult. The really foundational work on cover crops was figuring out how the nutrients were moving from the crop systems to the water. And, and one thing leads to another, and we figured out that um, a lot of the nitrogen was leaving through nitrate uh, leaching into groundwater in dissolved forms. So we were looking at solutions for keeping that nitrate out of groundwater, and uh, cover crops emerged as a potential, uh, a potential technique. So we started doing the work to identify solutions, and cover crops emerged early on it's a solution with a high potential to, to reduce nitrogen losses. Because if you live in Maryland and you live in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, you're after meeting those nitrogen reduction goals. And we're still, it's still this huge challenge that we're dealing with that we haven't solved yet. But that's the big issue for us for cover crops from the beginning. And we've always sort of stayed mostly focused on that. A cover crop does a number of things. So it, it, it creates a, a root mass that goes down into the soil and takes up excess nutrients. It can break soil compaction. So a farmer may not have to go in there with heavy tillage to break up the compaction. So a cover crop itself can do that job for you. As organic matter rises and gets bigger, the soils have more water holding capacity. Those water holding capacity allows crops to grow in various different extremes, particularly during a drought situation. If those, if those soils can hold moisture and allow it to be used for the next cash crop, that's a benefit to the farmer. Cover crops are actually playing an important role in helping manage weeds. Uh, they have potential to be winter forage, so you can graze some cattle on cover crops. So you're keeping the nitrate out of groundwater, you're improving the soil, you actually have some economic return with livestock. So there's this whole host of uh, benefits at the water quality level and the soil as well, and then some economic benefits to farmers too. But the real driver for us, I mean, I don't want to lose focus on this, is the water quality part. 
All those other things are great, but the thing that we've really had, uh, we've been struggling to solve is the nutrient loss issue. So from that standpoint, uh, the programs have stayed focused in Maryland more so than some other places on that water quality part of it. We live and we farm in such an environmentally sensitive area. We have to make sure that we're cognizant that our farmers are good stewards and cover crops is such an important practice that farmers can use to meeting those, uh, to, to help being better stewards and be able to work with the environment. I think citizens can look at what our Maryland farmers are doing and know that our farmers are using good conservation practices, that they are producing food for their neighborhoods, for the state, but the Maryland farmers are also providing an economic driver. They help restore Chesapeake Bay, which has a whole cascade of be benefits in terms of uh, the fisheries and just the general quality of the, of the bay. You, you're going out there, your, your experiences on the bay are better when the water's cleaner. As we are going through this process of Chesapeake Bay restoration and its water quality improves, that's going to bring in tourism. As tourism comes in, that brings in tax dollars. As tax dollars comes in, the state then has more money to work with to not only to help farmers in meeting their conservation uh, quality goals, but also to meet some of the other uh, needs that the state has, whether it's education, roads, or whatever that may be. Cover crops work. For, for helping to solve the nitrate problem. So we can maintain agricultural productivity and keep the nitrate out of, out of, uh, you know, out of our water resources. So it's, uh, it's just one of those things that uh, it's in the toolbox.